I'm very fortunate that I grew up in a time when there was no phones and there was no social media. And I suggest, yes, I'm on social media on a very limited basis because I have a story to tell. And it's a great platform. Use it as a platform. Don't use it as your life. My biggest advice to give everybody in the world is, like I say, we live in an external world. Everything is, is you got to see it, touch it. It's, it's, it's external. If you can, for the rest of your life, live inside of yourself, stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you got to flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing, and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not going to find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you got to be quiet. Shut the fuck up. Go in a room. Stop talking. Search your soul. Search your mind. Search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you got to go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? I'm, I'm deep in the cookie jar. And the cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I, was, I failed and I went back. I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded. All the things that kicked my ass, I put them all in the cookie jar because at times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test. That's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh, my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision, I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you, went, you were in three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died and killed it was so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. <laughs> you are. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood down my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity I use it for motivation. I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You got to be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, right. it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, He's not going to stop. And that's, I took all the negative things. I need to go to the hospital, this and that. And I used it all. Who the hell could even get out of that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stress fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. First, before I answer that question, I want to say everybody listen to this. Um, I'm the happiest man on the planet Earth. So people may take this, and as so many people do, we live in a very weakened society. So when they hear a throwback guy like me from back in the ancient days of, <laughs> of Garanimals, they often think this guy is just whatever. So if you think that I'm some unhappy guy, you're wrong. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me, has made me happy. Basically, I just don't walk around with a dad going to smile on my face all the damn time. So, you know, Merry Christmas. But, um, but basically, what the dark side is, is we all have a cookie jar. 
and we all have a jar of fuck. <laughs> That's its official name. It's a jar of fuck, man, where shit just, it just ain't going right. And in Hell Week, what they do in Hell Week, because this is where I really went to the dark side. Mm. What they do in Hell Week is they design Hell Week to find your flaws. And they do a really good job of that. It's 130 hours of continuous training. You may get two hours of sleep. And they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality. And then they start Hell Week. And that's the beauty of it. And for me, I'm not some not, you know, nasty God-given guy. You know, I, I don't have a great bit of talent in anything. So what got me through horrible times was the dark side. Was I created... My name is David Goggins. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of him. You want to break my motherfucking legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So every instructor that put me through buds. My job, what drove me, was I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face. I wanted you to feel worse than I did and you were going home to a nice warm bed with your wife or your kids and a nice meal and I was still out there in the grip suffering for another 100 hours. I wanted you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very unfucking comfortable And I want you to think about when you went through fucking Hell Week, how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit, knowing I'm not thinking that fucking way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. I use the hurt you're trying to put on me, I flip it upside down and use it. You trying to use it for kryptonite? No. It's power pillars for me. I'm, I'm using it for strength. I just flip negative into positive. That's all it is. You said I can be me. The second you said I can cuss and be me. And cussing, people I say, man, you cuss all the fucking time. Why? <laughs> well, I hate to say it. The best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what? Yeah, I went through Hell Week, and man, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> no. That motherfucker takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to fucking start. It, it, it allows me to express right. where I was at at a point of my life. Mm. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. Oh God, I love that. We so tap true. dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up, people. It's okay. Trust me, it's okay. You might be called nigger one day. It's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word. It's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit, and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. The, the younger generation quits. Not everybody. So I got I to put that. People get their butt hurt. So not everybody. Most of this generation quits the second they get talked to. You did this wrong, you did this wrong, or, or they get yelled at. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it but still do it. People have a, a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy it doesn't need more. People go, well, 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 why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. 
The, the whole, that, that's life, man. That, and and, and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. Mm-hmm. I hated going to school. So guess what? I was dumb as shit. That's what, well, one plus one is two. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble and you're good for nobody. That's, that's a great question. It, it, that's a very scary situation when you are on one side of the door and your mind is racing because on the other side of that door, it could be no one. It could be four guys with four AK-47s. That, that door you're about to open could be booby-trapped. So once you open it, boom, your legs are gone. So there's a thousand things you think about when you're the first guy, second guy, third guy, getting ready to go in a room and flood it. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. Mm. And that's why so many people are lost when I start talking. You have the right. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior, and I, would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, op- get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. It's like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane, every, 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 everything you do you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas. Good on you. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military. Like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dotted line to be a, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You got to accept that. And that's the mentality you have. And that's what makes you a warrior. If you're scared to die, you're a bad warrior.